Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Thursday, June 3rd. It is 6 a.m. as I'm starting the video. And don't forget, uh, you can run the video at 1.25x on your video player to uh, cut the runtime. I'm just going to summarize the futures market as flat as a pancake. There's a little touches of red and touches of green, but nothing really going on uh, in futures. On the macro front today, we've got jobless claims. There's a composite PMI coming out and also ISM services number that's going to print. Uh, I think we've got three Fed speakers this afternoon. And then tomorrow we've got uh, Jerome Powell early in the morning. So a lot of ears and eyes will be watching him. Um, on the blog site today with this post, I've got some commentary on the, uh, the Reddit crowd, the meme stock explosion that happened yesterday and has been building. I think you can recall last week when I talked about the Reddit army coming back and I'm not going to get into the whole, you can read that commentary, but I put, uh, I gave you traders that want to jump into that mix several bullet points of uh, helpful tips that you might want to consider when you're jumping into jumping into these stocks and really the most important one is don't put your trading career or your family at risk these are truly lottery tickets you're going up against market makers that are paid to win and i'm not saying that to discourage you from gambling because that's what it is um, we've all been there and I'm just trying to offer you some uh, advice or how to do it the right way. And I'll give you, I'll, I'll just give you one example. Uh, we know the implied volatilities are jacked to the moon. There is some, you know, way out of the money uh, AMC theater options that were priced at 700% IV. And I mean, that is, that's beyond a small cap biotech. That's beyond anything, you know, we've ever seen or I've ever seen before. And, you know, that's the market maker's way of just overcharging or, or charging at such a level that it's hard to win. Now, the thing is, the traders have been winning. So I'm not saying it's impossible because it's not. Uh, there are there are fortunes being won and lost out there on a daily basis. But you might be thinking to yourself, "Wow, I can sell I can sell a, a call that is way out of the money, and I'll get you know all I'll collect all this premium, and it's going to decay by tomorrow, right?" That's that's a normal thought process for an option trader. Or, you know, I'll sell, I'll sell a $20 put that expires tomorrow that's $40 out of the money. The thing is, whenever you sell an open or naked option, you have 100% exposure in either direction. What I'm saying is, is that the thing that you collect $20 in premium could cost you $80 when you try to get out. So if you do any, any option selling, in my opinion, it's got to be a spread. Uh, I don't, and I haven't done the analysis to, to see if a spread would even pay or if it would be worth it, but just keep that in mind. Never do anything that's going to put your, your trading career or your family at risk. And if you don't know what you're doing or you're scared or, or just uneasy with the whole thing, just let it go. There's plenty of money to be made elsewhere. It just may not be made by tomorrow. And that's, that's the difference. So 
if you want to dive in, just protect yourself. That's the most important thing that I could offer. But I do have some other ideas on the blog site. Jump over and look at those and hopefully they'll help a little bit uh, in trading these names. So let's get into SPY and the Fat Man names. And then I've got a few uh, other charts that I want to show you. Really, the, the, the indexes and Fat Man names have just been oscillating, going nowhere for the last week and a half. And I think in a, in a market like this, it tests your patience, right? When things slow down and you get it in your head that you need to be trading or, you know, you start hunting around for things that you normally wouldn't do just because you're bored that can obviously get you into trouble and kind of knock you off your game plan. So I think having these oscillating markets that aren't moving is, is offering a chance to learn patience and discipline uh, to whatever system that you have. So use it to your advantage. You know, can you sit there for eight hours and not make a trade? Can you do that? It's not as easy as you think if you're an active trader, and you probably already know that. Uh, at times, it makes your skin crawl to just be sitting there, and there's not, absolutely nothing to do. Um, but that's trading. That's the thing that aspiring traders need to understand. There are times, go, 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 and there are times where you're just throwing your money away you know, getting into the chop where there's absolutely no direction being offered by the market. So look for objective trades, uh, obviously, but if whatever you're doing is not working, stop doing it. And if you find yourself just getting chopped to pieces by entering trades that, you know, upon reflection aren't that hot or objective, stop doing that. Go back to first principles and look for objective trades uh, or no trades at all. So anyhow, SPY, we're just sitting here at 420. That's your pivot point. Uh, yesterday, a whole bunch of nothing. Uh, 420, you see the upside and downside targets there. And, you know, just know that it's going to break loose at some point and you got to be ready for it. And you can set your alarms accordingly. You know, if you want to try to play this dollar fifty, like we just talked about, you know, knock yourself out. If you're that good that you can, you know, pull a dollar fifty out, you know, both ways three times a day, that can add up. But if you're not that sharp at catching these reversals, then you're just going to be throwing your money away. Uh, cues. We've got this oscillating range between 332 and 334, uh, 50, let's call it. Uh, I mean, you can try to trade that $2 range, but really what it's going to take is a breakout above 334.50 or a breakdown below 332 uh, to really get some, some movement going. And I've still got this projected measured move from this double bottom over here at 337. So we're still waiting to see if that measured move target gets achieved. So I'll just leave it there until uh, price either breaks down or, or breaks out and, and we, we, we move higher from here. On the 30 minute chart, just an exploded view. A lot of chop in between that $2 range, but not, you know, otherwise nothing else is happening. Uh, IWM remains the strongest of the three indexes uh, in this little time period that we've had here. It's kept a bid, didn't end up doing anything yesterday, but it's on a, a, a stronger ascent than SPY or QQQ. I think today the uh, your pivot remains 227.75. And I've got the upside and downside targets there for you. Uh, as you can see, you know, just for the couple last couple days, we've been chopping around that pivot point. So 
I think above you can be long looking for uh, 229 and below uh, keeps that door open to 226 ish level 226 25 uh, and then the the level that really needs to hold on any pullback is this 25 225 50 level and that goes back to this big level we have right here on the two hour chart where we had all these re reactions at that level all along the way so on any kind of pullback i would be a buyer at 225 50 and then with a stop just below on that pullback and then that's got a hold for the bounce and hopefully a move higher uh, Facebook I mean nothing yesterday just you know chopping in this range I think 330 remains your pivot above I think you can look for uh, uh, 332 50 333 and if we were to lose this uh, 326 50 area then the door opens for a move back down towards 324 uh, Apple's been a non-event you see here just chopping back and forth around this 124.75 area. The big level overhead is 128. We've beaten that level to death over the last few days on commentary around these uh, 20 and 50 day EMA convergences on the daily chart. So uh, 124. 75 remains your pivot there. Tesla had a bad day at the office yesterday when, you know, everything else was doing nothing. Uh, we had this pivot here at 625 and it fell away and kind of closed near the lows of the day down here around 600. So going forward today, that's the level that has to hold 595. And like as we've talked about, you lose 595 and then you're back in this prior trading range. And then my expectation would be a move back down towards this gap and probably even a gap fill down to 560. So 595 is an important level to hold. So this breakout has validity. Otherwise, you break back below and all this looks fake. And then everybody that bought up here discovers or concludes that they were wrong once you lose the breakout level. And then all these people start bailing out on their positions. And that's what gives you that accelerated move downward once you re-enter the uh, prior trading range. Uh, Microsoft had a move up to this uh, 248.75 even maybe a touch to 249 yesterday and then fell away quickly and this is a this is an interesting setup uh, once it entered the gap you would think that it would just go ahead and fill it that's the normal thing but we did have this uh, support layer marked in here and that was an example where the support, the intermediate support halfway through the gap was respected by price. You can see here, came down, stopped, had a look below, and then recovered. So today, your top of the gap becomes your pivot point at 247.50. Above, I think you can be long uh, as long as it stays below. My expectation would be to have a target back at 245 and remember that was the breakout level on the daily chart so bulls got to hold 245 you know into the weekend and next week once once price breaks below 245 then all of this above looks like a fake breakout and you know we'd probably see it be seeing a breakdown in the queues and the broader market so that's an important level, this uh, 245. Amazon's been a non-event, just slogging between 3200 and 3250. I think those are your key levels for potential upside and potential downside. If you want to try and trade 
this $50 range, you've got to wait till price reaches one or the other first. You know, if it reaches $32.50, then you've got a choice on your hands. Do I try and fade that? Or am I waiting for a breakout to take it long and go higher? So um, that's a, you know, game time decision based on how that price action looks and what's happening in the broader market. I think, uh, you know, the fangs are going to be, for the most part, moving together in mega cap tech. So, you know, if you get a little move up here to 3260, you know, when Apple's red, Facebook is red, Google is red, Microsoft is red, you know, it's probably going to be fake. But if you get that breakout and all the other ones are green and moving higher, then you can have a little bit more confidence that, you know, it's for real and you can go long. So always keep that fat man matrix up, even though you're only trading, you know, one particular name or two names. Uh, the other ones have a big influence on on that stock. Uh, it helps to have everything moving in unison versus just just one. Uh, those are kind of harder to trade, in my opinion. Google. Thirty two. Excuse me. Twenty three fifty five is your pivot. And you can see that that's been an important level here on this breakout move and forming this flag structure up here. You can see all the touches here. You know, there's support, 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 couple tags of support yesterday. 23.55 has to hold. If it doesn't, then you're, then you're on a down cycle here. First target being... 2330 but as long as this holds I think you can be long looking for a move back up towards 2390 and then if that 2390 can be convincingly taken out you know if there's an upswing in the queues and the rest of the fat man names then you can look towards 2400 which I don't think will pose a big resistance level and I think your your real target is 2430 so that would be a worthwhile move you know that could come on a friday afternoon tomorrow could come today but once there's a breakout a real breakout not a head fake like this one here but a, you know i think it's going to be uh relatively brisk up to this 2430 level i don't think it's going to limp around and take four days to get there I think once there's a breakout, it's going to be pretty quick. So if you're not interested in trading this area, make sure you've got your alarm set on uh, the high side and the low side of the flag. So that way it'll call attention to it when and if price is ready to move. Uh, Netflix, soggy day. It did trade below 500, which is the pivot. But it came right back up to that level by the close. Uh, I think you can be long above 500. I'd be very cautious below. And if you see, you know, fat man falling apart, then you can be short against 500 and look for 493. And then uh, I think there'll be a more major move if 493 fails and then back down to 485. But while we're in this oscillation mode, you know, the cues and the fat man names are just, you know, hovering around pivot points. I doubt, you know, Netflix is going to fall apart while everything else is just fine. So, I mean, you can be ready for that. I just think all of these are waiting for the same thing, the same signal, whatever that signal is in the market to either take it higher or lower. I think this is going to trade right along with it. So, uh, let's go through some other charts here. Same comments on uh, SMH. You know, we had this impulsive move off the floor, and now we've been uh, oscillating in and around 250. I think that's your pivot for today. Above, look for 253. Below, look for 
247, 24750, and then anything below that would be uh, targeting 244. Uh, we talked about uh, last week and early this week about the, the split in NVIDIA, that if anybody wanted to participate and look for that anticipated upward climb into the split, you got that move and you're sitting pretty right now. I hope some of you got that. Uh, trail your stop. Just trail your stop up and stay long. It looks good. There's no reason to sell here. Uh, and if you've got, you know, weekly options that expire tomorrow, that's a totally different ball game. You know, whether you want to uh, hold it into tomorrow. I mean, if it's strong today, maybe you hold that into tomorrow. But if it wavers a little bit, just close it out or buy yourself another week. I think that uh, I think that split, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, the 19th of June. But check that. Check when that date is. Uh, uh, if you're trading it and you know want to kind of stay long into that into that split, I think there, you know, unless the whole market falls apart, I think there'll be a definite upward bias in NVIDIA into the split. Uh, Yeti has been a strong consumer name. It's been in this tight trading range between, say, 83 and 90. Why don't you set yourself a couple of alarms at those levels? Uh, 83 is the 50, and then 90 is the top of the box. You get a breakout above 90. I think you can see a move to 100. You've got uh, a $7.5 trading range. That would put the measured move target up here at 97.50. But once you get to 97.50, it's going to 100. So I think that breakout is worth waiting for. Or if you got, you know, if there's some little weakness and it pulls back to the 50, I think you've got an even better entry point for a long because then you can set your stop right below the 50 EMA. And then, you know, if it loses that, then you know you're wrong and you quickly get out with a paper cut. Um, but you've got a <clears throat> you've got a flattening PPO here above zero. You get a you get a bull cross here, coupled with the RSI staying strong and its bullish regime above 50. I think you're going to get that breakout. And I think you're going to get a move to 100 with uh, any luck. Um, and then here's one potential short idea for you. <clears throat> Burlington had this consolidation range and big uptrend line off of the November uh, low. But now we've broken below the 50 and below this 310 lateral support level. Uh, if you wanted to take a short, I think you can short against the 50. You could tighten it up a little bit, say short against 310 if you wanted to. But I think you're, you know, if it gets on a down cycle here, I think your target is going to be uh, 290 to 285. And I would almost be willing to bet that if it got down that far, it's going to go ahead and go down and test the top of this gap at 280. So we're sitting at 307 now. If you got that move to 280, uh, that's 27 bucks. So, you know, you could afford to risk five. To, and you'd have a one to five or five to one risk reward ratio. You're looking for a, a $25 move and you're willing to risk five to get it, you know, that might be an interesting trade, especially if you see softness in the broader market. Like if, if we start to roll over here or sell into the weekend, you know, pick a spot right here. If you got a little baby green bar this morning 
that that pushed it up to like 310 or or 311 that would make your entry even tighter and more appealing as long as it stayed below the 50 i think the bias has to be uh to the downside so if you're new to the channel i hope all the levels helped uh, hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell and you'll get more information like this uh, when i publish to youtube uh, if you would like there's some links in the show notes go over to the blog site read the commentary on the on the uh, meme stocks trading that you'll also find other interesting information there and there's a place to register for all my content so that would be great to have you uh, long time listeners i appreciate the time hope it's helping uh, pass the link along leave me a positive comment I'd really appreciate it. So let's wrap it up there. Have a great day of trading. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.